Okay, we are on to 1.2, use segments and congruence. So, in geometry, a rule that is accepted without proof is called a postulate or axiom. A rule that can be proved is called a theorem. As you will see later, postulate 1 shows how to find the distance between two points on a line. So we're going to start here first with postulate 1. Rule of postulate. Okay, the points on a line can be matched one to one with real numbers. So here, point x of one they called it, a, point x of two, b. So the name of the points and the coordinates of the points. So here we go on, the distance between a and b, um, written a, b, okay, is the absolute value of the distance of the coordinates a and b. So the absolute value is always positive because it's distance. So basically you're finding the difference between um, b and a. Okay, and they put absolute values on just because if you're at negative numbers, okay, your distance can never be negative. Um, distance is always going to be positive. So let's go ahead and show. It's not difficult at all, 1.2. So, but it's called the rule of postulate, and you just have to know what these things mean. So I'm going to give you a printout, which you can keep and use all the time, because there's a lot of postulates and theorems in geometry, and you just want to know what they mean. So apply the rule of postulate. So we're going to measure the length of ST to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. All right, so they ask you to do that. So you've got a ruler. So align one mark of a metric ruler with S. So they went ahead and put S at 2. Okay, so you want to start at a whole number for sure. Then estimate the coordinate of T. So they put T here. You can see it's not at a whole number. It's some decimal. And then you align them and you find that here, this is about 5.4 when they counted through, and then S is at 2. So if you take 5.4 minus 2, the distance is 3.4. That's another way to do it, rather than having to count from here to here. You take the distance of here minus the distance of here, and then you're going to get the same thing. And it's about 3.4 centimeters. So fairly straightforward. But that's what they call the ruler postulate. So let's go on to example two. So we're going to apply it to a real world problem. Before we start, let's go through this. Um, so adding segment lengths. When three points are collinear, so on the same line, you can say that one point is between the other two. So here, look at this line, A, for A, um, C. Okay? You see that B is between the line. So point B is between A and C. So it's definitely collinear. But over here, you've got line D, F. But point E is not on the same line. So point E is not uh, going to be collinear. So see the difference between them very clear to see so the second segment is the addition postulate so if b is between a and c so you've got b between a and c then you can say a b plus b c equals the total length so showing here this length plus this length so a b this length plus BC equals the entire length, which is AC. So pretty straightforward to see. If you add the two segments, you get the entire length. So that is what we call the segment addition postulate. So it's when you see this in geometry, it's not difficult, but you just have to understand what it means. So if B is between AC, that's all they're showing then here, then AB plus BC equals that total length. And of course, it's always absolute value. So even if you have negative numbers at A and uh, C and you add them, 
you're going to end up with a positive number. The absolute value will always make it positive. All right, so we're going to use this on a real-world problem. So let me go ahead and see if I can get a little closer. Okay, it's sorry, it's a little bit dark. Okay, let me make this write this. This is 380 miles. This is 360 miles. Okay, so those are the two important things. So the cities shown on the map lie approximately in a straight line. So they're saying a straight line. So here you've got Lubbock, here you've got Tulsa, and here you've got St. Louis. Let's see if we can, if I can make it easier to see. Okay, that helps a little bit. Okay, use the given distances to find the distance from Lubbock, Texas here to St. Louis, Missouri. So the distance between this line here. Okay, and you can see that they put Tulsa, Oklahoma right in the middle. So they're showing you how to use a segment addition postulate. The fact that you have this in the middle and you know the distance between Lubbock and Tulsa, I wrote here is 380 miles. Then from T to S from Tulsa to St. Louis, this part is 360. So, and the total from Lubbock, Texas to St. Louis is going to be LS. So you can find it by saying the total from Lubbock to St. Louis from L to S is LT from Lubbock to Tulsa, Oklahoma, plus from Tulsa, Oklahoma to St. Louis. So basically you're going to add to the 380, plug it in from Lubbock, Texas to Tulsa, Oklahoma is 380 plus from Tulsa, Oklahoma to St. Louis I put up here is 360 if you add them together. The distance from Lubbock to St. Louis is about 740 miles. All right, so you can see it's not difficult. Okay, so here we're going to find a length. Use the diagram to find GH. So they want this portion. So make sure you look at everything and you're real careful to answer what they're looking for. So we're going to use the segment addition postulate to write an equation. We know that FH is 36. The entire length is 36. And the entire length is made up of FG. So FG is 21 plus GH. Those two added together give us FH. So in geometry, you're going to find that everything goes back to algebra. So you have to remember all your algebra skills from Algebra 1 because you're going to be adding and multiplying and you just, it's always going to come down to algebra. Solving equations, a lot of geometry is setting up stuff and solving equations. As long as you can solve equations, then you're going to be fine. All right, so let's make up a equation to find G of H. So we know that the total FH equals FG, that's it, just make the equation, plus GH. And then afterwards you plug in the numbers. You know that F of H, the total length is 36, equals F to G, that length is 21, plus, this is the missing length, we don't know what GH is. So once you make up an equation, you can solve it real easy. So if I take the total, 36, then of course I'm going to subtract 21, because that's what you do. You undo it by, if you have addition, you do subtraction. So minus 21, so now G of H is 15. And the way you can check is add 15 and 21 and make sure you've got 36. So it's nothing that's uh, difficult at all. All right, we're coming up to some of the last stuff. So we're going to talk about congruency, because this is mentioned all the time in geometry. So line segments that have the same length are called congruent segments. As soon as they tell you something's congruent, it means it's exactly the same. So in the diagram below, you can say the length of AB is equal to the length of CD, and you can see that they're segments, see? 
They don't have any arrowheads on them. Or you can say AB is congruent to CD. So one segment is congruent to the other. So whatever way you see it, but you're going to see a lot of congruency in geometry. That means they're exactly the same. So if AB were 6, CD would be 6. So the way that they write congruency here, so again, AB, that's that segment. Congruency is like three squiggly lines. As soon as you see that in geometry, that's a way of saying congruency or equal. So you're going to see congruency a lot. Now, my squiggles don't look as good as theirs, but you can clearly see they mean the same thing. So get used to seeing congruency. All right, last example here. They've drawn lines, okay? So they've plotted it for you. That's why you're going to need graphing paper too. So plot J, which is at negative 3, 4, and K, which is at 2, 4. So here you can see that you have a horizontal line going like this. Then you have L, which is at 1, 3, and M, which is at 1, negative 2. Then determined whether, again, they're segments, okay, the segment of JK and LM are congruent. So congruency means they must be exactly the same length. So of course you can look and you can count. Um, I'm not saying you can't do that, but that's not always going to be feasible. So we're going to show how to do the ruler postulate. That's what they were saying, the difference between here and here. So when you go along here, you're going along the x's, right? So you don't need to worry about the y's. We're looking at the x's. So 2 minus, that's the um, equation that you use, 2 the first, or the first one here, or the last one minus the first one. So 2 minus negative 3. So the minus and the negative, you should know that makes a positive, so it becomes 2 plus 3, and that is 5. Another way you could do it, like I said, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can count. The length of JK is 5, but they're teaching you to use the ruler postulate. That's all. So get familiar with both. Both work, but make sure you know how to do the ruler postulate. Now this line is going up and down. That means it's in the Y direction. So we're looking at the Ys. And it would not matter if I went from 3 minus negative 2 or if I went from negative 2 minus 3. You're going to get the same answer. Even if one's a negative, you're going to make it positive by the absolute value. So they went from here. Negative 2 minus 3. Okay, minus comes in the formula. Sorry, let me keep... Minus comes in the formula, minus 3, so negative 2 minus 3 would be negative 5. But because we put absolute value bars, absolute value bars make everything positive. So this length is 5. And again, you can count and check. So they're both 5. So then you can write the statement, JK, the segment JK and LM have the same length. So JK is congruent to LM. Okay, so you notice they always go alphabetically, J to K, L to M. So they are congruent, and that's how you can prove the statement. You can't just look, you have to prove it. So you proved it by the ruler postulate, and that's it for today. So you're going to continue working on any homework, and we will do 1.3 next.